So in this video, I didn't edit anything from when Zoomer starts talking till he finishes. There's a little distortion in the audio, but I didn't want to cut it out. I also asked Zoomer some questions off camera. And at the end of the video, I'll share the questions and his answers with you. Hey guys, this morning we received some emails and some messages about something that came up on Steve's channel, Philippine Information Channel. And uh, Zoomer reached out to me. He wanted to make a statement and he wanted to talk to the audience. And I offered him this platform. And uh, here it is, totally unedited. Uh, Paul wanted to make a statement on the channel, and uh, I give you Paul for World Zoom. Hey, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. And special thanks to Mike uh, for Mike's Philippine retirement for allowing me to be on. And if you'll just allow me a small indulgence before I talk about what's gone on in my past, it would be greatly appreciated because I love the U.S. and I love the U.S. military, and I served. Uh, in the U.S. Navy. Whatever people might be telling you, uh, that is absolutely true. I did hear and see that there's something called stolen valor uh, that is out there about me. Now there's a lot of things that happened in my situation that's absolutely true and you can ask and I'll tell you about it. This individual that gave a confidential interview with the Powell Tribune in Wyoming that made this statement, I had never met him before. And believe me, I never told anyone that I was a U.S. Navy SEAL. I was uh, US, in the U.S. Navy. I went in after my time at Indiana University. I also was a hospital CEO that ran a Veterans Administration clinic. So believe me, if something like that had happened, the prosecution, the U.S. Attorney's Office, the court, the people giving victim impact statements, that would have come out time and time again uh, talking about my character or lack of character. You know how the U.S. judicial system comes up. I haven't heard that claim in, in like 13 years or 12 years. Uh, so that's never come up since one person uh, made that statement. It's simply not true. I did not do that. And I would thank you and I look at you face to face and say I'm no stealer of valor. I was in the Navy and I was a VA administrator and I appreciate your belief on that. And as, as for all the rest, most of what you've heard and you have seen uh, is absolutely true. Uh, while I was serving as a hospital president and CEO, uh, I did commit money laundering and I was charged for conspiracy to commit money laundering with one other gentleman. In addition to the money laundering charge, I did uh, also uh, plead guilty uh, to um, cons uh, wire fraud. I don't think it was conspiracy to commit wire fraud. It was just wire fraud. So when you wire money or send documents, Western Union, whatever that might be, send money uh, through a wire transfer it in the commission of a felony, that is uh, a felony. And so uh, this goes back starting in 2010. Uh, I was actually arrested in uh, June 6 of 2013 um, in Thailand and uh, I flew back to San Francisco and I was arrested there at the uh, airport in San Francisco by uh, the FBI. I remained in custody because I had been outside of the U.S. and deservedly so, right? Uh, so I stayed in custody until the sentencing in uh, January 27th of 2014 where I pled guilty uh, to the count of conspiracy to commit money laundering and also a wire fraud. And I was given a federal sentence of 120 months, uh, 10 years. That was in January of 2014. So those things actually did occur, 
uh, in the victim impact statements, uh, the insurance companies, the hospitals, anyone that could make a statement, which, you know, during that sentencing, um, you know, lasted a couple hours where everyone could have their say. There was never a mention of anything about stolen valor or military. The military service was to my benefit. Nothing negative. And believe me, it would have been in there. That's just so important for me to hear. Think what you want about the rest. I did that, right? I take ownership of that. World Zoom, I've never hid from anything. I've got 202 videos out there for you to view because I feel like I bring something positive to the table in my life experience, both the goods and both the bads. I don't have a Patreon page. I don't have uh, any membership page. I've never asked for any money. I don't have a buy me a cup of coffee. I've never had an uh, advertisement of any kind. I've never asked you for anything. Will I in the future? Yeah, I probably will add those things in. We'll see how this goes, but I'm not saying there's never going to be a time I don't do a membership page. I probably will, but I thought I would prove myself. I go by Paul. It's Paul from World Zoom. Uh, you know, I mean, do I want to talk about these things? No, I don't want to talk about these things, but you know, when it comes out like this, where it's just hitting every page and, and every individual, then I think it has to be addressed. So you can have these things directly from me. I think it's important to note that, um, you know, again, I was arrested in June of 2013, sentenced to 10 years in a, uh, January of 2014. So you're probably doing the math thinking, well, if he got a 10 year sentence, 10 year sentence and got three years of probation, how is he here? How is he in the Philippines? Well, in fact, I went back to court four times during that period of time. I won my case, or at least went back to case, sorry, I went back to court, made my appearance in front of the judge on a couple different occasions, uh, settled the monies that I owed. The hospitals were paid in their entirety, uh, back, every dime back to them. Uh, I agreed to the civil settlement, which was uh, $3.5 million. I still owe the Internal Revenue Service, right? And I don't know if I'll ever be able to pay all that. I've got it down about $300,000 uh, from what I originally started to pay in 2016. But anyway, on appeal in federal court, uh, I was released from federal prison in April of 2016. So what was going to be a 10-year sentence uh, ended up being less than three years. And I, I was at a federal work camp, a minimum security. We had no guards, we had no security cameras, no fence. Uh, it was an honor system in a dormitory style. Everyone had to work. Uh, I actually had a compound driving license where I could drive around the compound. On the compound had a federal penitentiary and a medium. Uh, uh, facility, a media prison. Those are serious prisons. Again, I was in uh, the camp, which uh, you know was much less uh, you know serious. My my job in that camp was as the GED uh, instructor. I taught uh, the other federal inmates that did not have a high school diploma. So anyway, when I went back to court in April, I actually won and I was released. Thank goodness. So. I, I went in June of 2013. I got out April of 2016. Um, you guys that know the federal system know there is no parole. The only way out of a sentence, the best you can hope for, is to have a 15% come off of your total sentence for good behavior. So in my case, if I got 120 months, I'd still do 105 months, so some eight and a half years in federal prison before I would be eligible to go home. In my case, I won uh, my case. Uh, I went home. I did, in fact, serve uh, six months on house arrest. So that was part of the requirement. So as you go back, uh, you can look me up and you will see my actual release release date is October. 2016. After that time, I have my passport. I've been able to travel. I've been all over the world 
you know, since that time. So I've been a lot of different countries in that time because I have no restrictions. I'm not hiding. Everybody knows I'm here. I've been to Thailand. I've been to Cambodia. I've been to Dubai a couple times, the Philippines. I've been all over and I have no restrictions, no problems here. I'm on a tourist visa. So do I apologize for doing those things as a, as a money launder? Yeah. It's embarrassing and I, I deeply regret the embarrassment I caused my family and my friends. And uh, you know, it was a bad, bad you know, experience for me, but at least as far as I'm concerned, I pled guilty. I paid as much of the money back as I could. I've said I'm sorry over and over. I didn't change my name. It's Paul from World Zoom. Uh, you can look, you know, and see the time I went into prison and the time I came out of prison. So if you guys know the federal judicial system, you're going to know that they don't play any games, right? When they give you your sentence, that is your sentence unless you do something to diminish that. I was able to push that down to under three years, which on a 10 year sentence is pretty substantial. So I have no reporting responsibility. I have nothing. I haven't had anything for years, you know, like seven years, I haven't had anything. Uh, I've had my passport, I think since 2017, uh, I was able to have that. I wasn't charged with any embezzlement. I wasn't charged with theft. I was charged with conspiracy to commit money laundering and wire fraud. And I don't want to diminish or to play down what I did. I absolutely broke the law. I knowingly broke the law. I pled guilty to breaking the law and I've certainly turned my time. Will I ever be a hospital CEO again? Oh, I don't think so. You know, I lost four of my licenses uh, during that time. Lost meaning just suspended. I now have three of them back. I lost one uh, permanently. I was in the federal work camp when it came up to court. I was out of money and had no way to defend myself. So they took that from me lifetime. Fortunately for me, it was a lesser of the licenses. They didn't take my actual board certification for hospital administration or my federal uh, license for long-term care or health care. But that one's gone. But you know what? I don't want to portray it as an easy life. When I came out, I went to my mom's house and I lived with my mom on house arrest. I couldn't get a job to save my life. Who wants to hire a convicted felon that just embarrassed your entire community? So the VA actually set me up to go and get a CDL license. So I went from being a hospital president, living pretty well through my own stupidity and greed and arrogance. I have a, had two felonies and when I came out, no matter where I went, I wasn't getting those jobs. And believe me, I set my sights high. When I got back, I put on my suit and set my you know, resume out and I'd get the calls and I'd march right in there, but I had to disclose. I mean, obviously they're gonna do background checks. So I did exactly that. So the VA set me up and said, hey, why don't you become a CDL driver? There's a huge demand, it's gainful employment. Nobody cares at all about your background. So I did, you know, I'd never done any manual labor of any kind really to speak of in my life, never. Uh, so I went and got my CDL. I worked for Caterpillar, I worked for Monsanto, I drove, I did what I could. Now eventually I was able to weather a bit of the storm and I admire truck drivers. I mean, my God, that's hard work. And so I'd, I'd never experienced or seen it. I still have my CDL license, so hopefully I don't have to use that again. That's too hard work. So I was able to work my way up to a smaller white collar job. I was able to get a job with the state where they do the background check. As long as you tell them everything, they decide if uh, what you did would disqualify you, um, you know, for employment with the state. Uh, it was obvious that it probably wouldn't because I was in a work camp. And if you've had any crimes against kids, against women of violence with a handgun, large amount of drugs, you can't be in a camp. You can never get a low enough security level to be in a camp. 
So that gave me a heads up with the stay. I was able to get a pretty good position. Uh, later on, I was able to get a for-profit chief operating officer position at a university uh, in London. And uh, that worked out well. And then uh, while I was in Dubai working, I met uh, Sheila. And um, as you know, she's in law enforcement, ironically in Dubai and I decided to come here to the Philippines so you know that that's the best of the story that I can tell you uh, did I do the things that some of you are are reading about in the paper and some of those things yeah for the most part the ones that you're reading about I in fact did do please keep in mind some of them were embellished when you're down and you can't defend yourself and papers are doing interviews with anonymous people and taking statements you know you you can't defend that and I've never really tried to defend that but the other day was the first time I've ever heard this one that I talked about earlier in the show and that that did not happen that can't stand and so you know I appreciate you not believing in that think what you want about a convicted felon that really is me uh, in uh, January 27th of 2024 so just about a little more than half a year I am eligible uh, to go back to court and have my felonies expunged. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I have a good lawyer. I've done good things. You know, since that time, I haven't had a moment trouble. I have my passport back. I've been gainfully employed. I've got hundreds of volunteer hours teaching GED and working at Goodwill Industries. So will I get it expunged the first time in, in uh, January of 2024? I don't know. I mean, I'm hopeful. I, I think probably not maybe the first time. Uh, it depends on if someone comes and, and decides to complain and say you shouldn't expunge that. Because I was in fact guilty. So when you have something that you want expunged, uh, you better have a pretty good reason to, to make that statement and to be able to say that. But, you know, I appreciate it. I hope you'll get over to World Zoom. Keep watching my videos. Thanks so much to Mike's Philippine Retirement for just the time. Uh, it, it is greatly. Uh, I'm sorry if I disappointed any of you. Uh, I, I've already been through this with my family and with my friends, and you know my entire community knows all about this. My service, my time, what I did wrong. It was in dozens of front page papers. So. It may have been a surprise to you, but I've been living with it for more than a decade. So thanks for your time. Thanks for your understanding. Blast me in the comments if you want on Mike's or on me as well. Let, let me know, you know if I'm a low life or you still respect me or what you think. Just don't believe that about the valor. That didn't happen. So thanks so much. I asked WorldZoom a few questions off camera. And I'll share with you the few questions that I asked them and his response. I asked him if the interview he did with Paul, Old Dog New Tricks, was that a true story? And he said yes. I hope Paul and Paul get together and discuss this on Old Dog New Tricks, his YouTube channel. I also asked WorldZoom if he served his time. And he said yes, he served all the time that was required of him. He made restitution. He f fulfilled the lawsuits that were filed against him. And he is free to go about his business. He has no restrictions. I also asked him if he was in the service. And everything that he stated about being in the service is true. And he said, yes, it was. I asked him about his IRS debt. He said he owes about 300000 and that he's making payments to them on a regular basis. I also asked WorldZoom, how does he make a living? Well, he teaches online and he has his YouTube channel. All his income is from online teaching and YouTube. I asked him if he was going to continue with his YouTube channel and he said he hopes to. Depends on the response of his viewers. And I want to thank Paul for coming on the channel and sharing with us. Like I always say, if you don't like a YouTuber, you don't like his content, don't watch. The way to hurt a YouTuber is just to not to watch his show. No views. 
because income is generated by views. Thanks for watching.